And this is why when you look at the movement of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, if you look at the camp of Abi Abdullah, the Imam was not just surrounded with Arabs. The primary audience of the Quran were the Meccans, but the message of the Quran was meant for all people. If you look at the camp of Imam al Hussein, you would see black men, white men, Arabs, non-Arabs, the elderly, the young, you would see a Roman, a Turk. It was a very diverse pool of people. And the Ashab of Imam al Hussein they beautifully reflected the universality of Islam. It is narrated that on the day of Ashura, there were many of the companions who were eager to come forward. One by one, they would come to Imam al Hussein. They would ask him for permission to go to the battlefield. And the Imam would always express a bit of reluctance. Do you think it's easy for Imam al Hussein to see his followers martyred and slain before him? There was a man who came to him, an elderly man by the name of John. Do you know who John is, my brothers and sisters? John was a slave. He was in his 90s on this day. He was a servant of Abu Dhar. When Abu Dhar was banished by Uthman ibn Affan to the desert of al Rabada, John was with him. When Abu Dhar passed away in the desert, John returns. He returns to Medina. He joins the household of Amir al-Mu'mineen. After the martyrdom of Amir al muminin he joins the household of Imam al-Hasan After the martyrdom of Imam al-Hasan, John goes into the custody of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. This John lived with three of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. He was purchased by Amir al muminin He spent his formative years in the household of the family of the Prophet. On the day of Ashura, this old black man comes to Imam al Hussein. He says, Ya ibn Rasulullah, do you give me permission to go and fight? It's very sad when you see an elderly man. The Ummah has hundreds of thousands of Muslims, if not millions. There are only 72 with Imam al Hussein, and one of them is an old black man who should be on his, who should be at home resting. But he came with Imam al Hussein. He's standing under the scorching sun, and he's pleading with Imam al Hussein to give him permission. Imam al Hussein السلام, loved the elderly, and he was reluctant to give John permission. He says, Ya John. إِنَّمَا تَبِعْتَنَا طَلَبًا لِلْعَافِيَةِ O oh John, you joined my family in search of a better life. I don't want to see you martyred. You have my permission to leave and go back home. John says to Imam al Hussein, يَا بْنَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أَفِي الرَّخَاءِ أَلْحَسُ قِصَاعَكُمْ وَفِي الشِّدَّةِ أَخْذُ لُكُمْ He says, Aba Abdullah, is it fair that I stay with you during the times of ease and I abandon you during the times of hardship? لا والله I swear by Allah that I will not leave until the blood of this black man mixes with your blood. He kisses the feet of Imam al Hussein, begging him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, give me permission to fight. The Imam alayhi salam reluctantly gives him permission. 
this elderly man draws his sword and he charges into the battlefield. Ya mu'mineen. He fights valiantly. He kills a great number of the enemies until he is dealt a fatal blow. He falls on the plains of Karbala and he calls out to his mawla, Aba Abdullah Adrikli. Oh Hussein, oh my master, come to me. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam rushes to the battlefield. He cradles the head of John. He wipes the blood from his face. And look at what Imam al Hussein does. He places his cheek on the cheek of John. John, when he feels the warm cheek of Abi Abdullah on his face, he begins to smile. Tears of joy roll from his face. What does he say? Man mithli wa ibn Rasulillah wa adhiun khaddahu ala khaddi. How lucky am I? How lucky is this black man that the grandson of Rasulullah places his cheek on his cheek and the Imam only did this with his own son and this shows you that Aba Abdullah was sending a message on that day that even though John is not from my family it is his piety that creates this affinity between us la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al ali al azim wa sayalamu alladhina zalamu ayyam qalbi yanqalibun والعاقبة للم...